Via telephone, City Councilman Corey Roman. Corey, good morning to you. Good morning, fellas. How are you all doing? Good. good. The, uh, apparently the number one question on Facebook this morning for you is, is Corey calling <laughs> to announce that he's switching to the Republican Party? Um, no. Um, you know, I'm glad. Um, you know, I, I told you I, I told you I had to take a, um, a bit of a break, um, you know, from, from the radio to, to focus on my schooling um, the last few months. So I'm really glad to be, um, you know, back with all the jokesters. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, I really miss, you know, that, um, that fruitful um, comment section that we have. Um, you know, so I was, it, it honestly did give me a good chuckle. But um, no, as of today, no, that, that, is, that is not what we're, what, what we're Oh, you put a qualifier on there. As of today, I heard that too, Rob. My, my ears perked. Uh -uh. I Meaning there could be well, a the headline is Corey Roman hints. <laughs> <change party. laughs> well, fellas, you know, um, I'll tell you. Um, you know, when I got involved in politics from the jump, um, you know, it really wasn't um, necessarily about a party to me. Um, you know, I necessarily um, I aligned you know more with the Democratic Party um, just for a few key issues. Um, but as I, you know, as I have um, divulged into more of the, um, you know, the back end work of, um, you know, democratic politics, I'm, I'm really starting to find out that I am a lot more um, conservative um, than a lot of um, other Democrats. Um, so, you know, take that as you, you know, take that as you wish. Um, but for now, you know, I'll tell you, I am um, definitely still a Democrat and I'm proud to be one. I can also take that as... You've got to evolve as the state evolves. And right now, if you have an ambition for higher office, it's pretty difficult to get elected as a Democrat above the city council level, I think. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's 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 clear as day. You know, um, you, we talk about it often. And, you know, I'm, I'm not oblivious to, to the state of uh, obviously the, the political affairs in the state right now. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to stay genuine. Um, you know, it, it, would, it would genuinely would be easy. Um, you know, if if running for the higher office was all that I was worried about to put the R behind my name, um, because it's been done before by even, um, you know, the top office holder in our state. Um, so, I mean, that's that that's definitely a play that some people use. Um, but I'll tell you that I, I genuinely got involved with this to um, to make a difference in my community and um, see, you know, projects come to fruition and and help our constituents. So it's not necessarily about, you know, the the, the literal politics for me all the time. Um, it's really about seeing, you know, um, good government and, and really, um, you know, these, these past few years have been, you know, a lot of learning for me. Obviously, I'm, I'm fresh into the political scene. Um, you know, this is my, my third year on council. Um, so, you know, the, the last two years were really a big um, learning curve for me. Obviously, I hadn't been involved in any type of um, government at any level. Um, so, you know, I'm really trying to take it one step at a time and, and trying to trying to make sure that I uh, keep my values where, where they began at. So, Well, Corey, you've all, always impressed us with your maturity that's uh, way above your age, and I envy your age, by the way. Um, but, but uh, no, you've always... You've I envy his maturity. <laughs> <laughs> two for two. Uh, hey, I want to ask you about February 10, 2023, I'm not sure what you can and can't say. I assume you can't say a lot about this. I don't know. Maybe you can relay the facts, but because I've gotten two very cryptic press releases from the city of Martinsburg mm -hmm. about a traffic stop. One came from Kinsayer, a city attorney, yeah. and it was it was as vague as vague could be other than saying we don't condone what happened at a traffic stop. And then uh, a new release that came out from Mr. Blake's office at uh, on uh, May 5, again, about this traffic stop February 10 that quotes the mayor, Kevin Knowles. And Kevin, I think, joins us tomorrow on the program. What can you share yeah. about this? Well, I mean, you know, um, not really much outside of, you know, the, the, the press release. We have to, and I, I know you all understand, you know, you, you yeah. talk about these things often on the program. Um, when things are, um, you know, going to cause um, litigation or possible litigation, um, you know, it, it genuinely is um, the, the best stance. Um, for the government and for their um, employees or elected officials to um, really look at the situation full scope um, and allow, you know, um, things to play out in the courts, um, you know, before you jump to, to rash decisions. Um, I, you know, became aware of the situation, um, you know, when I when I came across um, a video that was sent to me, um, which happened to be the, the body cam footage. Um, you know, I, I won't go into 
to, you know, the, the situation itself. Um, but I can definitely say that I agree with um, City Hall and their statement um, that we, we don't condone that, that kind of um, behavior. Um, so we'll definitely see what comes from that. Um, but we're definitely going to make sure we're keeping our thumb on it and um, trying to ensure that the, these kinds of things don't continue to happen. Because when these kinds of things happen, um, you know, the, the, the taxpayers are the ones who have to, um, you know, pay, pay out if, if that, that's what comes. You know, so if we can um, do anything possible to continue to protect, protect our taxpayers, um, you know, obviously we're going to have to have those conversations and um, continue to, to be proactive and, and ensure that things like this don't, don't continue to happen. Can you share any facts of the case? No, I mean, I, I'll tell you, there's, you can go, um, and there, the, video, the body cam footage is, is widely available, um, you know, online. So I, I will let people uh, make their own decisions. I believe that the video um, does speak for itself. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't really have anything to say outside of, you know, what I saw um, for, for my own, you know, for my own eyes. Was it a board decision to put out a press release that essentially says we know something that we can't tell you about? Well, it just well, seems like an unforced. Well, I'll tell you, it, it's kind of like we, we couldn't, it's not that we couldn't tell you about it. It's, it's, it's the body cam footage has already been released and, it, and it's out there. What, re, what really caused, you know, the, um, the statement that needed to come out was the fact that um, city council members, and I, I know that Mayor Kevin Knowles, um, and definitely City Hall is getting bombarded um, by national media um, looking, for, looking for statements. And, you know, I, I obviously, um, I try to answer my phone as much as I can, um, you know, because I never know whether it's going to be, um, like this case, you know, a um, reporter from Tennessee or wh- whatever state they were looking to, looking to run a story, or I don't know if it's, um, you know, a constituent down the street that needs help with, with the water line or, or anything of that sort. So I always answer my phone. Um, but, you know, that those days really turned into um, back-to-back-to-back um, calls with journalists. Um, and I'm, I'm really not in the position to, to give any type of, you know, formal statement on the issue. Um, because as we discussed earlier, possible litigation may come. Um, and, you know, that it's definitely being handled internally um, already. So, well, you know, there's, there's not much I can really say other than that on the, on the specific issue. Um, other than I, I genuinely do agree that we do not condone that type of issue, um, that type of um, behavior. Um, and, you know, I, I've said it before, when I first ran for office, um, we want our police um, department to be um, big on community policing. And they have been. And, you know, that's, that's a big shout out to um, Chief Swartwood and um, Deputy Gibbons and, and um you know, all the different folks that are working in the police department. But when we have instances like this, um, it kind of, it kind of um, can override, you know, all of the good things that have been happening. Um, so, you know, we definitely have to make sure we nip this in the bud um, and make sure that we're taking care of this so that we can get back to what we know our police department needs to be doing, which is community policing, um, you know, ensuring that all citizens feel safe within our city. Um, and, and really just doing the, the good work um, of police officers because, you know, and, and it's a hard time to be a police officer right now. Um, you know, I, I have sympathy for those folks. Um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the good folks that are in the profession that just genuinely want to help their community and make them a safer place. Um, when we have instances like this, um, it obviously brings up that, that more negative narrative that um, I believe that, that, you know, the majority of police officers would love to get away from. The statement from Mr. Blake said last week the city of Martinsburg was made aware of an incident that took place on February 10 regarding a traffic stop subsequent arrest by the Martinsburg Police Department of an individual who allegedly made a rude and offensive hand gesture directed toward officers who were patrolling the city. A review of the video and actions of the officers involved in the incident are under investigation and is proceeding through the disciplinary process as required by state law. Mayor Kevin Knowles states, I am a supporter of the men and women of our police department and have been since I started serving as an elected official in 2012. I sincerely appreciate the work our police department does to keep our city and community safe. However, I cannot condone the type of conduct that I witnessed on the video. The public deserves and will be treated with respect 
by those who have sworn an oath to serve, protect, and uphold our laws and Constitution. I am pleased that Chief Swartwood has begun the internal investigation to ensure that the officers are held accountable. I have made clear to the senior leadership of the Martinsburg Police Department that I expect all our officers to treat the public with dignity, respect, and proper decorum, even those individuals who may not show the same respect for the police. Chief Swartwood stated the vehicle stop performed by the officers, he mentions the date, does not meet the standard of performance and conduct that we expect from our officers. I have begun the necessary internal investigation to ensure that the matter is investigated fully, fairly, and completely. Police officers must always remain professional, and I know our MPD officers truly are. Every day I see the great work of our police department and appreciate the hard work that they do. That from uh, the city of Martinsburg statement. Matt Miller. Yeah, and I, I just was thinking, Corey, I, you kind of hit the nail on the head just a moment ago. And in my mind, the, the community policing and the reputation that the police department in Martinsburg has gained within the community as, you know, a, a caring part of our community, connecting with our community. And so, you know, you've got to obviously look at this and, and trust that this is just a, a, a difficult situation that you wish would not have happened, but certainly is not indicative of the way that this force has carried out its duties and responsibilities no i mean and you're exactly right i mean that that's the big thing i'm trying to um trying to relay um you know obviously all across the country um we have incidences um you know that 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 um you know don't shine a, a positive light on the uh, police department in general um but I, I truly do believe you know in martinsburg um and you know from the leadership of um chief swartwood you know, that, that we have um, started to, you know, regain a reputation of being, um, you know, active in our community, um, you know, whether it's through uh, the Martinsburg Initiative um, or if it's, you know, being downtown when Robbie Blair and Main Street are throwing all the, the um, awesome events we have. Um, you know, that's, that's the kind of um, narrative we want to have around policing um, because we want, you know, not necessarily just the young folks. We want all folks to, you know, understand that the police, the police are here to um, serve and protect. Um, and you know, when we when we do have unfortunate incidences like this, um, you know, it, it can cause some people's uh, mindset to shift. So, um, really, you know, obviously this this isn't the type of thing we want to continue to happen at all. Um, but you know, I really do want to um, emphasize the good work that has been being done. Um, by our police department and by the leadership there. Which, with all of that in mind, I can only imagine, because it it flares it up slightly in me just hearing uh, that that you're saying there are national calls coming all over. Uh, Does that bother you a little bit, right? It's like people in wherever don't give a rip about Martinsburg Mm -hmm. or the people of Martinsburg or the city officers that, you know, oversee and and help to keep the peace in the city of Martinsburg. But as soon as some little nugget of, wait a minute, there's some controversy, let's turn this into a national story. Hey, shut up and mind your own business, please. Is there a part of you that hits that, you know, that that button? (laughs) Of of course. I mean, of course there is. Um, But there's also, you know, another part of me. Um, You know, I was telling folks when I was getting these calls from, from the national reporters, um, that I had just left a, a journalism class at Shepherd. Um, so, you know, like I, I genuinely understand the um, full circle of, um, you know, what does make headlines and what doesn't. Um, so, you know, I, I can't blame them necessarily for, um, you know, trying to trying to find a story that will do their publication, um, quote unquote, well. Um, but, you know, I, the person, um, you know, the personal side of me and the, the city councilman of me, um, you know, it, it obviously does, you know, irritate me at times, you know, that we don't um, necessarily get um, the accolades for all of the great, you know, projects and different things that we are doing within the city. But when one negative thing does pop up, um, you know, it, it does um, garner the attention. But that's that's the way our media works currently. Um, you know, it, it all of you know, if, if it, it I don't want to say it wrong, but if it bleeds, it reads, or, mm-hmm. if, you know, if it, you know, that, that saying um, is very true in journalism nowadays. So I can't blame them fully, but I do definitely um, take to the, to the comments you made about um, how it is irritating at times. Yeah. Hey, we're talking about it right now. Um, if it bleeds, it leads is, is the quote. Yeah. And, you know, you I, I want to push back a little bit, Matt, on, mm-hmm. on what you're saying. I was an emergency responder for two decades and, you know, there, there's a mindset 
that goes with that. I was a firefighter, not, not a cop, and I haven't seen this video, and I'm certainly not throwing anybody under the bus, but just judging from the reaction to the thing that I haven't seen, there was clearly something, it, it would appear that there was something that's untoward. And I think there's danger when we, we, we kind of become too defensive and, and say, yes, they have a hard job, and yes, they have strong leadership, and, and there's, there's this, all the good intentions in community policing. That does not take the responsibility of the outlier out of the equation. So I, I think it's important as, as we see law enforcement in particular, but emergency response, uh, responders in general, sort of being vilified in the media, often way over the top. We can't have a reaction that goes the other way. And, and protects them because of, of the badge. People are responsible for what they do. And as an emergency responder, I went, it was, it was my intent to walk into other people's bad day. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, I had a certain responsibility to, to be the one who didn't get upset. Mm -hmm. And in a case like this, if it involved you know, digital communication, yeah, it amps up, it, it, it makes the person angry, at which point it's up to that individual, again, not having seen this, but if it's what I imagine, it's up to that individual to either back off or call a supervisor or say, you know, dude, that was that was not polite. It is not the time to jack up the situation. Right. So I think the, it, there's a there's a tipping point here that needs to be avoided where mm -hmm. we I hate to use the term good guys and bad guys in this circumstance. But, you know, in, in the if somebody did something wrong. They did something wrong and they need to be held accountable for it. And, and John, I fully agree with you in that regard. I think that the part that just bothers me is this is a local story. Why does this suddenly become a national story? Because if, you know, like Corey said, coming out of that, that class, you know, well, hey, I've got to get the story. And so I've got to cower the entire nation and go to Little Martinsburg, West Virginia, that this reporter may have never heard of before because they saw this video, and it becomes now this national thing, and somebody gets their quote-unquote 15 minutes of fame, and, and, and officers who did not do the proper thing suffer super consequences that may be beyond. In other words, why does it be – everything suddenly becomes national, and I you don't know, know that it needs to that? be. If, uh, again, in the absence of hard data, you stop mm -hmm. that on February 11th, by saying we had essentially apologizing if you know if if an apology is necessary again mm -hmm. i'm not throwing anybody under the bus but if you go out before it becomes a story and you get ahead of it and say something something bad happened and it's been taken care of and you know that's how you prevent it from becoming mm -hmm. a story by making it a not story our guest is Corey Roman, Martinsburg City Councilman. Corey, there is a city council meeting tonight, and uh, you folks are faced with a couple of retirements that are coming up. Uh, Officer Bill Parks, who's been on the force for more than 20 years, and, of course, Chief George Swartwood, who's been there almost from the time he graduated from high school, uh, I think, in the, with the Martinsburg PD. And these will be a couple of big positions to fill because it's hard to be downtown and not know who Bill Parks is, and it's hard to live anywhere near Martinsburg and not know who George Swartwood is and what he meant to the community. Obviously. I mean, it, you know, um, we do have, you know, these, these positions that are coming up, and, you know, they're um, huge shoes to fill. Um, you know, so um, we're going to have to make sure that we do our due diligence um, through the process and make sure that, you know, we, we do get, um, you know, quality, quality candidates for these positions, um, you know, whether that's internally or externally, um, you know, that's, that's up to um, debate. Um, but, you know, we do have to make sure that we, um, you know, you'll never be able to necessarily replace a um, Officer Parks or, um, you know, Chief Swartwood um, just because of, of how they, they were um, as, as individual people. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to try and do our darn best to make sure that we do find folks that have that same, um, you know, passion for um, genuinely what I want to get back to is, is community policing. Um, you know, they, those two were, were in my opinion, um, great examples of, you know, the type of officers that um, cities and counties and, and police in general need. Um, so we're definitely going to have to try and get, you know, folks that that are up to par with um, the other folks that are leaving those positions now. Corey, over the last, was it seven years now, we've had 
We'll be looking for a, is it a fifth police chief? Now you went through, there was Kevin Miller and, and then Maury and George. Uh, I think there might have been somebody in the interim in there. I'm not sure. But now you'd be looking to hire another police chief. Uh, are you disturbed by the lack of continuity in the office? No, um, I, I'm not necessarily. You know, from the from the time that I've been um, been on council, um, you know, we we um, you know brought on Chief Swartwood, um, and he's done amazing. I mean, I, I, I honestly can't speak to you know um, prior police chiefs because I, I honestly wasn't a part of that process. Um, you know, I don't know what the thinking of the council was. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's clear as day. Um, but you know. Um, I think that, you know, we have to make sure that we do um, whenever there is a vacancy um, for any position, make sure that we're getting people that are not just qualified, but, you know, have the um, have the, the personality skills that we're looking for in police officers here from Martinsburg. Is it difficult to hire police officers right now? The pay has been improved. I think when George was on, he said the pay is now somewhere around fifty thousand dollars in terms of starting pay. Yeah, I can tell you I have. um you know, all the um, different careers we're hiring for right now. Um, and, you know, if, if you're out there listening and, you know, law enforcement is the, the role you want to take, um, the city of Martinsburg, um, we're starting a prob- probationary police officer um, full time, obviously, for a minimum of 52 five. Um, so, I mean, that with on top of the excellent benefits package, um, you know, hopefully that will um, appeal to some folks in the area so that we can get, you know, as many applicants as possible. Um, but it really comes back to, um, you know, why I take the stance on when we talked about the issue earlier. Um, being a police officer is, is a hard job right now. Um, you know, I have good friends. Um, you know, my brother, um, soon that they're, you know, my girlfriend's um, sister's brother. So, you know, a long way away from brother-in-law, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a police officer as well. Um, and, you know, it's a hard job, um, you know, so anything that we can do to um, attract and, you know, retain our police officers is what we're going to continue to do. Um, and, you know, I, I believe the city of Martinsburg has done a great job at making sure that our our um, salaries and benefits are not only um, comparable to the area, but but leading the area. So, you know, that's something that the city will look at throughout the budget process as we go forward and, and adjust as needingly. Corey, thanks so much for your time this morning. I do appreciate it. Of course, fellas, and um, hopefully now that I have a little bit more time, I can get back in there and get on the payroll again. (laughs) Have a a good day, buddy. (laughs) All right, y'all. See you later.